Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. God's word for our consideration as we continue our celebration of Christ's resurrection is the gospel that we heard a few minutes ago, John chapter 20, beginning at verse 19. We read, A week later his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. This is the word of our Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior, dear friends. We live in what is often called the age of information. I mean, just think how we're bombarded with information 24-7 right at our fingertips with the advent of the internet and the availability of home computers and especially our smartphones. Uh, We have so much information constantly being flooded into our lives. Adding to that is the popularity of social media, which allows us to share that information quickly and with Lots of people. So if you you come across something that you find particularly interesting or you think would be helpful for other people, you just have to repost it on your Facebook page or on your Pinterest. And all of a sudden, dozens, maybe hundreds of people have that same information. It's great, except for the fact that a lot of that information turns out to be fake. So much misinformation, untruths are spread because people don't use their common sense. They don't use reason. They don't approach things with a little skepticism, but they accept it if they read it on the internet. So, you don't get cancer from using deodorant. You won't increase your memory by 75% just by sniffing some rosemary. And you're not going to get rich, sorry to tell you, by sharing your bank account information with that kindly Nigerian prince. Not going to happen. If only more people would use a little more reason, a little more common sense when they hear information that sounds too good to be true. 2,000 years ago, a man by the name of Thomas heard some information that sounded too good to be true to him. So unlike what a lot of people do when they find something or read it on the internet, he didn't simply spread it to other people. He didn't immediately believe it. He was skeptical. The information was shared by friends of his, but that didn't mean he was going to believe it. He thought it was unreasonable. And what they had shared with him was that Jesus had risen from the dead and had appeared to them. Thomas said, that's not reasonable. That doesn't make sense. Jesus is dead. He died more than two days ago. They laid his dead body in a tomb. They rolled a heavy stone in front of it. They posted Roman soldiers to guard it. It doesn't make sense. It's unreasonable to believe that Jesus rose from the dead. Well, that worked for a while until a week later when, wouldn't you know it, Jesus himself appears to Thomas and invited him to to touch the nail and spear wounds in his resurrected body. So much for Thomas's reasonableness. But that raises a question. What is the role of human reason and our faith? To believe in Jesus and his resurrection from the dead, does that mean we have to suspend human reason? Put it on a back shelf? Do we have to be naive and gullible when it comes to believing truths that we find in the Bible? Let's take a closer look at that important question on the basis of Thomas and his skepticism. And we're going to see that a reasonable faith believes the unreasonable. Let's start with two important truths as we tackle this subject. Truth number one, human reason 
is a gift from God. God, our creator, endowed us with intelligence, logic, and human reason. So using a gift that God gave to us is certainly not wrong. It is not a sin to use your God-given gift of human reason. Human reason and the Christian faith are not mutually incompatible. Truth number two. The Bible is true from beginning to end. Despite the fact that for thousands of years, unbelievers and atheists have been trying to make the Bible out to look like nothing more than a collection of, of fantastic, unreal fairy tales that contradicts itself virtually on every other page, that just isn't the case. Now, certainly some people can pull things out of context and make them look like there's some contradictions. You can do that with virtually any writing by any writer. But the fact of the matter is, the Bible does not contradict itself, not a careful and objective look at it. And despite the fact that people have been trying to prove it wrong for centuries and centuries, they have never succeeded and never will because the Bible is true from beginning to end. So no, you don't have to put your reason on a shelf to believe what the Bible says. Christian faith and human reason are not incompatible. So, does that mean that Thomas was right in being skeptical about the message that Jesus had risen from the dead? Was Thomas being reasonable in his faith by rejecting the news that the risen Savior had appeared to his fellow disciples? The answer is, no, he was not being reasonable. That was unreasonable unbelief, not reasonable faith. Let me explain. It would be unreasonable to assume or to believe that a mere human could rise from the dead. That's unreasonable. But here's the deal. Jesus was not a mere human. Jesus was and is both God and man. And Thomas knew that. He had spent the better part of three years with Jesus. He had seen Jesus heal the sick, restore sight to the blind, make the lame walk. He had even seen him raise the dead. And he had heard Jesus say on multiple occasions that he would be handed over, crucified, and on the third day rise again. Thomas was not being reasonable in rejecting the message that Jesus had risen from the dead. That was unreasonable unbelief. And Jesus called him out on it, didn't he? He did it gently, but he did it effectively. When he appeared to Thomas a week later after he'd appeared to the other disciples, he didn't say to Thomas, you know, Thomas, I understand. This is hard to accept. I get it. You have every reason to be skeptical. No, not at all. In a very gentle way, but a very effective way, he told Thomas, you were wrong, and that was not reasonable. He said, here's my hands, here's my side, here's my feet. I'm the real deal, and you should have known better. And in just five words, Thomas confessed not just his faith in his Savior and his resurrection, but also he confessed his sin of unreasonable unbelief by saying, my Lord and my God. So what about us? How do we respond to the message that Jesus rose from the dead or, or anything else that we find in the Bible? Do we respond like Thomas did with doubts and skepticism or flat-out rejection? I'm afraid for many of us, maybe all of us, we are too prone to treat some of the truths that we find in God's Word with doubts, with skepticism. I'm afraid that, that sometimes even though we're, we are too apt 
too ready to believe something just because we read it on the internet. We're not all that ready to believe everything we read just because it's in the Bible. Here's the problem. The problem isn't human reason. The problem is how we treat the relationship of human reason to Christian faith. Human reason is indeed a gift from God. However, human reason is not the master of our faith. It is the servant of our faith. God and his word is the master of our faith. Human reason helps us put things together that God tells us in his word, but when we start letting human reason dictate to God what's true and what's not, when human reason says to God, you're lying, then we got things completely upside down, and that's what Thomas had done. And I'm afraid that's what we sometimes do too. But that's not reasonable. You see, a reasonable faith understands and accepts that God doesn't lie. That God can do anything and what he tells us is always true. That's a reasonable faith. A reasonable faith hears the message that Jesus died and rose again and believes it. A reasonable faith reads what God says in his word that he created the world in six 24-hour days and believes it. A reasonable faith believes that God loves us, sent his son to die for us, and has forgiven all of our sins. A reasonable faith hears Jesus tell us that in the sacrament we receive his real body and blood along with the bread and the wine and believes it. A reasonable faith hears our Savior say to us, today you'll be with me in paradise. Heaven is yours and believes it. A reasonable faith believes these things, not because we are naive, not because we're gullible, not because we have put our human reason on the back burner, but because God says it and God doesn't lie. And that's reasonable. So what are we supposed to do with the doubts and skepticism that we all have? You know, somebody once, a man who came to Jesus wants to heal his sons, confessed to him, Lord, I believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Well, Thomas overcame his unbelief by, by seeing and touching Jesus physically. But that option isn't available to us, is it? So what do we do? How do we handle our doubts and skepticism? Well, St. John, in our gospel this morning, gives us the answer right at the very end. He said, These are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The answer to our doubts and skepticism lies in the Word of God, the true Word of God. The reasonable faith goes back to the Word of God again and again and again. It reads those truths, it hears those truths, and it believes those truths. A reasonable faith combats our natural instinct to doubt and reject what God has to say by going to the Word and receiving the sacrament regularly. A reasonable faith turns to God and says, it's not reasonable that someone would rise from the dead unless that someone happens to be God the Son. That's reasonable. A reasonable faith believes the unreasonable, rejoices in the unreasonable, finds hope and confidence in the unreasonable because God is never unreasonable. Amen. And